Now, the Army has looked back over the last two years and has found um, 35 cases where a civilian att district attorney refused to take a sexual assault case, refused to take the case. And the chain of command in the military insisted that the case be taken inside the military chain of command. If the Army hadn't taken those 49 cases and the 35 where we've, we've achieved a conviction, those people would be walking the street right now. The, the, the victims would not have had the resolution that they deserved in this case. This was done inside the chain of command, chain of command insisting that a prosecution be pursued, and it was pursued successfully. I worry that if we turn this over to somebody else, whether it's a civilian DA or a, a non-entity in the, in the military, that they're going to make the same kind of decisions that those civilian prosecutors made. So I worry that we're going to have fewer prosecutions. Do you have additional information that you can share with this committee in terms of numbers of the number of times that civilian prosecutors have said no, military prosecutors have said no, but there are victims out there today that have had justice because the commander said yes? I do, uh, and uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. The Marine Corps has had 28 cases. They've looked back to 2010, 28 cases where civilian prosecutors declined to, to take the case. Uh, and of those, 16 of them, the Marine Corps was able to obtain a conviction at court-martial, 57 percent. So those are 16 perpetrators that are no longer walking the street uh, and 16 victims who received justice who would not have received it otherwise. The more startling numbers are from the Army, and I'll, I'll repeat them. Um, uh, the, uh, the Army has looked at 49 cases in the last two years. 35 of them have been completed. Uh, 25 of those, or 71 percent, resulted in a conviction and a court-martial. Two additional ones were plea bargained down to a punitive discharge. So that takes the number up to 77 percent of these cases that civilian prosecutors would not take. The evidence shows that actually commanders are bringing cases more frequently than their JAG lawyers and over their objections. The evidence shows that removing this authority from our commanders would weaken, not strengthen, our response to this urgent problem. It is clear that right now we have more cases going to court-martial over the objections of prosecutors than the objections of commanders. What about those 93 victims where the commander said, bring the case forward, even though the JAG lawyer said no? They wouldn't have gotten justice. Commanders prosecuted sexual assault cases that civilian attorneys had declined to prosecute. 